Hey everybody, Ted Forbes here and welcome back to The Art of Photography. In this video, I wanna take a look at mirrorless cameras and I wanna talk about using them with manual focus lenses. And you know, the really cool thing with a lot of the mirrorless design um, that really appealed to me early on and the reason I got into mirrorless cameras was that I have a lot of old 35 millimeter cameras and I have a lot of lenses. And so it made sense that all of a sudden if I could get an adapter that would work with my mirrorless cameras that all of a sudden I would have access to this full range of lenses. Well, truth be known, when I first got into this, uh, it was a little bit frustrating because you don't have a mirror and everything is displayed on a screen, whether it's the back screen on here or whether it's the viewfinder, uh, it's still a digital screen. And that was really awkward for me at first to use. However, once you start to get used to the fact that you have a lot of options when you have a screen instead of just an old visual viewfinder uh, that are available to you and you start setting these up the correct way, which I'm going to show you how to do today, it opens up a world of possibilities. And I found that these cameras perform just as well as my old 35 millimeter cameras, which I still use when I shoot film, but it's really natural progression for me to use these on mirrorless because it's just so easy and I can use the same lenses on my film cameras that I can on my digital cameras. So without further ado, let's go over to the desk and uh, let's have a seat. I'm going to show you how you can set up your mirrorless camera to use with manual focus lenses. Okay, so we're going to talk about using manual focus lenses with from old 35 millimeter cameras with modern mirrorless cameras. And I really love doing this because there's a way you can set it up that actually works better, I think, than using my old film cameras in terms of being able to get things in focus and take pictures. What's important to to note here is I'm using a, uh, my Sony a7s for this example but you could apply the same concept to anything that's mirrorless so a micro four-thirds camera uh, anything across the Sony line there's lots of wonderful Panasonic cameras anyway anything that's micro four-thirds Olympus you can do this with because you don't have that mirror included inside the camera body the distance from the sensor to the edge of the the, uh, the lens mount is pretty short which means if you can get an adapter, and there's tons of adapters available for just about anything you can imagine um, on eBay or Amazon, if you can find an adapter, you can probably get an old favorite lens on here. And what I really like about that is you might already own a large selection of old 35 millimeter lenses, and being able to use those with a mirrorless camera is pretty cool. The first time I ever used a mirrorless camera was a little strange to me because there is no mirror. You're having to view everything on some kind of screen. So for instance, on the Sony, you have a screen on the back and then you do have a viewfinder, but they are both digital screens. But I've also found that once you have this set up correctly, there's things that you can do with an electronic screen that you can't with just the kind of old school viewfinder that will aid you in focusing and what, what you're doing that will make this even easier to use in the old 35 millimeter cameras. And so real quick, I wanna show you my old Nikon FE2. And I used to, well, I still love Nikon 35 millimeter cameras. When I shoot 35 millimeter black and white, these are my go-tos. and I I love them because they're just so easy to use. You can put your shutter speed on automatic, attach your lens, and then you're actually going to adjust your aperture on the lens collar. It, it could not be easier to use. And I always love this setup. I also like the fact that the viewfinders in here, you could see well enough through them to actually get things in focus without much assistance. Now, when the digital phenomenon DSLRs came out, uh, one of the things, I mean, especially if you're using some kind of crop sensor, it's really difficult to do manual focus with those cameras because your field of view is so much smaller. The viewfinder is smaller, the area that you're viewing is much smaller. And this is where, you know, autofocus really comes into play if you're using a DSLR is because you need that aid to focus because you're just not going to be able to see through it as much. Now, also in the old days too with with Canon and Nikon and all these other cameras is they were all proprietary mounts so I couldn't really adapt my lenses to another camera system for the most part there are some exceptions uh, for instance with DSLRs the Canon current autofocus format you can mount Nikons too but you can't mount Canons to a Nikon camera so anyway the the mirrorless stuff really takes all that and makes it obsolete and now you can use whatever you want so for instance I've got two of my favorite lenses here um, this one is rather beat up, but I love it. It's my old Nikon 105 millimeter 2.5 aperture lens. Uh, this lens is kind of a classic lens. It was uh, it's a manual focus lens, and it was um, the one Steve McCurry used along with his FM2 to shoot the famous Afghan girl image. And so, it's a little bit famous for that. But it's a great portrait lens. It's a nice uh, sort of telephoto length that didn't go too far. It's really nice for shooting portraits and things of that nature. And I really love this lens. And I like to be able to use this with cameras now because 
one, I love the look of the lens. And two, uh, you know, it's a link that I like. I like to use it when I shoot video. I've used it on this show before. Over here, I've got a Canon. This is an old FD mount, which for years, I mean, Canon even abandoned this mount. So you can't even put this on a modern Canon camera. But now, thanks to mirrorless technology, as long as I have an adapter, I'm made in the shade and I can do that. So I have adapters attached to these lenses that just kind of live on here. And, you know, you can take them off and see how they work. But basically it's real easy. This is the adapter. Now this, this particular adapter, I bought one with a, um, with a, uh, a mount on the bottom so I can put this on a tripod. And the reason for that is uh, if I have a longer telephoto lens, I like to be able to use this so I don't put a lot of strain on the camera. The, this will attach to the tripod, not the camera, which is kind of nice. But these are really easy to use. You basically find one that adjusts to your lens. Um, the, the Canon FD have an aperture lock on here. I leave that so my aperture is like, what I see is what I get. So I, I'm actually viewing through the aperture all the time. And then what you're gonna do this to this is actually just mount it onto the camera. It's as easy as that. And I will say that it's, you know, you're dust prone at this point, which, you know, it's just how you are with all these cameras because there's no mirror and no shutter curtain covering that sensor. So you do need to be careful about dust and things of that nature. So anyway, the way you set this up to use with, or the way I like to set it up to use with manual focus cameras is this. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And we're going to go into the menu here, and I hope you can pick this up on the video. And so in your menu settings, what I want to do is I want to go on the, on the Sony system. Your mileage is going to vary if you have a different camera. But on the Sony system, I go to the gear for the camera settings. And there's some things in here that you can use that are going to make life much easier for you. you for instance, you can turn on the zebra. Uh, zebra is a set of lines that will start coming into your composition, showing you when an area is overexposed. I don't like to use that. I like to use the histogram, and I'll show you that in a second. But what I'm going to do is if I go under the second menu here, what you're going to do in whatever camera you're using is you're going to look for this thing called peaking level or peaking color. Anything with peaking and not peaking duck, we're looking at a different kind of peaking. What this means is when something's in focus, it's going to color it. And I'm going to select the level, and I, I leave this on pretty high, but you can suit that to taste. I have several options there. And then the other thing is you can change the color so I can make it red, yellow, or white. I keep it on red because sometimes. Uh, it gets hard to see when it's white, especially if you have a bright scene. So I'm going to turn that to red. Now with that set on here, let me clear some space here so we can do a little focus and you can see how this works. I'm going to go back out of my menu into my live view here. And what you're going to see is, for instance, on the curtains across from me, um, I'm going to go ahead and start twisting the lens. And you can kind of start to see that like certain parts of that image will light up with red highlights around them. Or for instance, if I focus on something like, let's go over here, there's a chair right in front of me and a couple lenses. So if I start focusing in on the chair here, See how that red zone picks up. That's showing me my where what's exactly sharply in focus. And what's really nice is this works not only in the back viewfinder, but also in the eye level viewfinder. And so this makes it really easy just to get things in focus as you're composing because you're using a color to tell you what's in focus. The other thing I do is I actually shoot in manual mode on here. The aperture is going to be physically controlled from the lens. So I'm at 1.4 right now. I'll shut that down to like 5.6, for instance. And then what I do is I like to set the um, ISO here to auto. And so rather than have this set at something that I have to go adjust, I'm going to set my ISO to auto. And what that's going to do, especially on the Sony's, it's going to keep it within a range. Auto will start to flash if it needs to go above 3200. On something like this camera, it doesn't matter because it does really well in low light. And then what I do is I use this ring to adjust my, sorry, I use this one to adjust my shutter speed. And so what you need to realize is on a manual focus camera, you're using this focus aid in this peaking thing but you do lose any kind of uh, image stabilization inside the lens. So it's important to know what your shutter speed is. And I generally try to keep this in something usable. Um, it depends on what your hands are like and, and how much you shake when you shoot. But you know, if I get down to a 30th of a second, I risk becoming a little bit blurry just because the camera shake and my hand might move. So I keep this up around 100 or so. I can move my aperture accordingly on the lens. The ISO will adjust accordingly. And the other thing is I have this set up. So if I hit the display, button a few times I'll scroll around and I like to use the histogram in here and for the most part this is kind of a subject for another video on how to use a histogram but that's just a very basic graph that's telling you where the light is in in your composition here so the stuff that's further over to the left is is going to shadows and the stuff that's going over to the right hand side 
our highlights. And so if you have your lens too far open and you're going way over to the right, so you notice when I start fo or composing up on you know that curtain where the light's coming in, you start to see it spike over there. So that's a really good uh, aid in exposure as well. And so once you have your camera set up this way, I found it's actually faster to shoot this way and more accurate than it is, I never thought I'd say this, than my old 35 millimeter cameras. And you know, it's, it's, it's amazing because even with a DSLR, which I guess with live view, if you have that on your DSLR, you can do a lot of this. But I, you know, I had kind of a problem with the mirrorless cameras. I was using them mainly for video when I first got into it and never for stills. And now that I've set it up like this, I can use my manual focus lenses. For me, they work just as well as autofocus. Um, I, you know, a lot of people will compare speeds of autofocus on cameras. For me personally, I can be pretty quick. Of course, it depends on what the lens is. They're not all created equal. But using that in the eye level finder, and it feels at home to me now, is a 35 millimeter camera did back in the day. And I can actually switch between them very easily. And when I go back to my 35 millimeter, when I actually am shooting film, which I still do quite a bit of the time, um, I, it's kind of disorienting to all of a sudden not have the peaking levels in the viewfinder because uh, they really are a huge aid, especially if you wear glasses like I do. And sometimes you don't have your glasses on they get in the way and so it's it's really nice to have that focus assist there so that in a nutshell is how you're going to use manual focus lenses with modern mirrorless digital cameras I want to take a second give a shout out to our sponsor today who are the awesome folks over at squarespace.com if you're not familiar with squarespace.com it is everything you need to build a beautiful website portfolio online store you name it and come over to the computer I want to show you how this works if you look at Squarespace's website you can browse the first thing you want to do and this is what's so awesome with Squarespace is that you sign up for a free trial and you start by browsing their templates here and let's say that I go through here and I pick a template that looks really nice and I want to use this and so let's view adversary and and I'm gonna go ahead and do a live preview of this and it's gonna open it up and you're gonna see exactly how this looks. And this one's got a lot of cool things with parallax scrolling going on that's really nice. And so let's say I wanna start here. I wanna build my photography portfolio or I wanna do something with that. And so you sign up for the free trial, go ahead and get started with the template and then you can go in and you can pick your fonts and your colors and your layout schemes and your pages and how you want the whole thing to fit together. And that's what's really cool about Squarespace is even though we all kind of start from templates, everything's customizable. If you do your own coding and you want to inject something in there they have code injection too so you're never really boxed in with Squarespace and what's really cool is that you also don't get painted into a corner as your website grows so if you want to offer e-commerce or if you want to sell items on here products or prints or digital downloads or whatever that may be you can do that through Squarespace and it is awesome you just turn on the features and you go it's a monthly price it's about eight as they start at eight dollars a month and Squarespace really are the easiest solution out there that's all in one for hosting and building Building your own website and they have a deal right now for art of photography viewers if you're interested I can save you money what you want to do is head over to squarespace.com and sign up for the free trial and on checkout use offer code AOP that's going to save you 10% off your order that once again is offer code AOP for the art of photography and that'll get you 10% off so go over there and try it now they don't require a credit card or anything just go over and check it out and see what Squarespace will do for you and I want to give an extra special shout out and thank you once again to the awesome folks over at Squarespace for once again sponsoring another episode of the art of photography I hope you guys have found this useful and for me mirrorless technology is really quite amazing and like I said it just took a little bit of getting used to it first but now um, the possibilities are there I mean I remember the first time I turned on one of my Sony cameras that I bought and put a manual focus lens on and the first thing it puts you off is all the stuff that's all over the screen and it takes you a little bit of time to go through and control and really realize what that stuff will do for you and now that I'm used to it, to be honest with you, um, you know, I started by just doing these for video work that I do, whether it be the show or other things, so I could use my manual focus lenses for those. But really, I'm doing a lot of still photography that way now too, and it's really becoming harder and harder to go back to using a DSLR because I'm getting so used to the way that certain conveniences operate with a mirrorless design. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can do this with any mirrorless camera. I happen to like Sony, and the reason I went with Sony is one, um, I really liked the way my video cameras were performing, and so it made sense because I use a lot of my digital work to cross over between still and digital to go with Sony. The other reason is, is that their mount is consistent and they also offer full frame cameras. So for instance, the A7S is a full frame camera and they also have APS-C size sensors too, uh, such as the A6000 and some of those models as well. So it's the same mount for all those cameras. So my adapters would all fit, my lenses would all fit and it would give me a lot of versatility. Micro Four Thirds works just as well and their 
are some wonderful Micro Four, micro four Thirds cameras out there. The only thing for me that I find frustrating about Micro Four Thirds is the ability to use wide angle lenses. And we're talking about using your old um, SLR lenses from 35 millimeter cameras mainly in this video. And one thing that you're gonna have a problem with with a Micro Four Thirds camera is on the wide angle side of things. And it's because the size of that sensor is so small, it's essentially a crop factor. So you can divide anything or multiply by two. So if you have a 50 millimeter lens and you pop it on that camera, it's going to be the equivalent of a 100 millimeter lens on that 35 millimeter frame or on the 35 millimeter camera. So everything doubles. And so for instance, a wide angle lens, if you're looking to get something around full frame equivalent of 25, uh, 24 millimeter lens, you're gonna have to cut down and find a 12 meter lens. And on the 35 five millimeter world, there's not a lot of 12 millimeter lenses that are not uh, you know, either fish-eyed or they're not really expensive. So that's the one point of frustration for me was on wide angle, and so that's why I went with the Sony mount. And of course, with a full-frame camera, you don't have to worry about that. So anyway, all that to say, um, it, this technique you can use on just about anything with your, your uh, digital display, and they work great. And so I hope you guys have found this useful. As always, if you like this video, remember to like it and share it with your friends, and subscribe for more videos, as I'm doing them quite frequently now, and I want you to always stay up on the latest and the greatest. Until next time, this has been another episode of The Art of Photography. I'll see you in the next video. Later.